Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today I'm going to show you how to easily complete one of Tarkov's feared quests, The Guide. The broad strategy here is applicable to other survival type daily quests too, as well as improving your general spawn safety and map knowledge. The Guide itself is a tricky task that unlocks at level 40 from Peacekeeper after Wet Job Part 6, and it requires you to survive and extract from all maps in the game in a row without dying. Although at first this seems nearly impossible, especially because Labs is included, it's well worth finishing this one because it not only gives over 42,000 experience points, but also $28,750 if you have Intelligence Center 2. This is worth somewhere between 2.5 to 3 million rubles depending on the rate you use, so it's pretty compelling. The issue is though, it's a pretty hard quest to finish. One problem is that once you've started, you have to keep going because there's no way to bank your progress and any deaths, disconnections or MIAs fail it and you have to start again. Run-throughs don't fail the guide, but you don't get a completion for that map either, so it has to be a proper survive or it doesn't count. No one wants to have to redo a map on this quest, so you have to ensure that you either get enough experience points to avoid a run-through or wait for 7 minutes after the start of the raid timer, which also gives you a survive. Personally, I avoid the EXP method because you have to do something in raid which opens you up to some risk. The rule of thumb is usually kill a scav and then search them, which normally gives enough XP so that you can get a survive when you extract. However, the crux of my strategy is the 7 minute run through threshold. This means you don't need to interact with the map at all and still get a survive. Now, I'm not going to pretend this is the most interesting quest of all time done this way, but it does make it much, much easier. As they say, if it works, it works. To demonstrate how unlikely it is to finish if you play normally through it and you have a 50% survival rate, say, your chances of completing the quest are in fact 0.4%, not the best odds. So onto the map order. Broadly speaking, you want to go from fastest and hardest through to the longest and the easiest. My personal list is factory, labs, reserve, customs, interchange, shoreline, woods, and lighthouse. You can replace different maps depending on your preferences, but I do recommend Factory and Labs first. Finishing the guide is about creating the most consistent run that you can, which means doing the maps that are more random earlier on in the session. Factory is super fast to retry, so this is the obvious choice to get out of the way first, and Labs second because most players are either very experienced there, plus you tend to get more suspicious gameplay here than elsewhere. Either way, both are not maps that you want to be finishing on in my opinion. The next set are determined by how the spawns feel, the likelihood of PvP when travelling through them, and the accessibility of their extracts, as well as some of my own personal preferences. Reserve comes in third for me because the spawns can be really rough sometimes and the extracts are quite limited, then customs as it's PvP heavy in general and it can be quite hard to stay out of the way of other players sometimes. I personally dislike Interchange in general and it has some rough spawns too so this comes in fifth, and Shoreline in sixth can have some bad spawns as well but it's normally possible to work around them. Woods as map 7 is fairly straightforward because it's easy to avoid people but it takes a while so it isn't one that you want to have to do over and over particularly and Lighthouse at the end because there are so many extracts and places to hide. For each one we need to look at the map and see where we can spawn and use all the extracts available to us given that we're not loot running for this quest, such as backpack and car extracts if the situation arises. So to start, Factory. This is first because if you spawn in forklifts for example and you get pushed from both Glass Corridor and the other left hand spawn at the same time, you're very likely to get into a really messy fight. Technically speaking, we don't actually need to go through this one as you can just play it normally until you survive because it's the first map, but if you do decide to do Factory later on for whatever reason, then this is for you. Broadly speaking, avoid the office for sure and forklifts too if possible, and if you can survive the initial 2 minutes or so then usually you're good. There's a bunch of defensible points, and I typically move into the tunnels as soon as possible from most of the spawn points. The S-Bend has a right-hand peak from both sides, which lets you get to cellars or gate 0 later on with relative ease, and has low player traffic. If you spawn up here, this corridor in particular is very rarely visited, and you can either stand behind the door or inside this container, which places you very close to gate 0 when the time comes. Just remember to bring your factory exit key to unlock the 3 extra PMC extracts, otherwise you'll be stuck with gate 3 campers. Next up is Labs. This is usually the map most feared by first time guiders, but ultimately the strategy is pretty straightforward. Most extracts on Labs involve buttons, loud audio playing, travelling around the map or raiders, all scary stuff, except for the backpackless extract, ventilation shaft and the sewers. Unfortunately, Vents is on the path for both raiders once buttons have been pressed and players moving around in the basement, so instead I move to the sewers as quickly as possible. There is nothing down there except for the extract, and the activation lever is right in the extract too. It is noisy, but it doesn't play an alarm across the whole map like a lot of the others do, and given we need to wait 7 minutes anyway, it's no big deal. 
If you do get unlucky, you might run into somebody, but typically if you beeline it to the sewer tunnel itself and move down that, it's unlikely that anybody will be down there. If you really haven't played labs at all, then get the map up and practice running to the sewers as fast as possible in offline mode from different spawn points until you're comfortable with it. I picked Reserve as number 3 because the map has some seriously notorious spawn points where you can die within 10 seconds due to line of sight from other players. We're also very restricted on extracts. D2 is the most camped exit point in the whole of Tarkov, the armoured train comes towards the end of the raid, usually with raiders around as well, and the hermetic door has that obnoxious alarm plus the requirement to run across half the map. Once you have Red Rebel and a Paracord, Cliff Descent is likely the best option, and after the first sprint section of the map, players typically congregate either underground or in the central buildings. Use nearby foliage to lay low for the first few minutes, and this should allow you to travel to the outer edge of the map and extract with relative ease. Just be careful of players that might have stayed up at Dome who are doing some sniping as you approach. Man. That was an epic shot, if I do say so myself. With three maps down, it's on to customs. Regardless of which side I start on, I typically use this route across the map. The hairiest section is crossing past dorms and bus station, but if we wait a bit at the start of the raid, then you should be able to avoid these players that make a straight line route looking for a Shala, Mark Trim, or just PvP in general. Starting from left to right, spawning here, I usually move through the containers and chill in this building here before moving onto the usual pathway. Over here, I'd run north halfway and then hide in a bush first. If you're the closest dorm spawn on the big red side, there are a few good bushes on Dorm's Hill that are pretty safe if you just head over there right away, given you are the closest and you won't run into anybody on your way through. RUAF is probably the most scary spawn point, as you have players coming from here and here, so moving directly up to here and taking cover is likely the best bet. Factory side tends to be a little bit more straightforward. Make your way up to this section with low traffic first and just be mindful of the stashes that players sometimes hit at the start. After waiting for a minute or two, we can continue on the regular route around the map. Personally, I check for the boat and go to crossroads if it's not there, but you can slide along to RUAF if you prefer. I feel that there are more players that way as well as some scav spawns, but it is quicker. Onto map 5, Interchange. As my personal Achilles heel, I stick mostly outside. Fortunately, there are plenty of bushes at many of the spawns, so we can wait a bit for players to get into the mall, although the highway, the power station and the ramp spawns require us to move quickly at first to get to somewhere better. Our extract choices are either railway or emicom, depending on where you start, as well as the no backpack extract and the power station car. Hole in fence can be good if you start in an awkward spot like I did on my run, but otherwise I try to avoid power as it can be an attraction for players using the power switch and hunting for scavs. Carefully pathing around the broad edge of the map tends to work out, although if you're coming from railway I prefer cutting inside the underground car park at the last moment and going out through the side. The southern area of Emicom is honestly a death trap, and I always try to be on the east side if at all possible when I'm leaving. Now, shoreline is not that bad due to the relatively new path to lighthouse extract. 50% of the time you'll spawn on the west side of the map and you can just chill here until you're ready to go. On the east side of the map, these spawns in particular are the most complicated, but the initial PvP can again be avoided by using a bit of tactical waiting. In my run, I spawned right at the top of the tricky spawns, and so in an attempt to get away from all of these guys, I assumed that the top spawns would make a straight line approach to resort. Surprisingly, Mr. Top Right took a downward turn towards Weather Station, which really surprised me and goes to show the benefits of the consistent approach rather than necessarily the perfectly time efficient one. This could definitely have been a run ending event. Remember to look for scav snipers on this rock as you come past, and that you can jump over this one to avoid the bridge. Map number 7 for me was Woods. This one is straightforward, but you have to haul it across great distances. Our two extracts of focus are either outskirts or northern UN roadblock, depending on which you get, although to be honest I have outskirts in 80% of my raids. Bridge extract can be convenient but takes a while, and is a target for snipers sometimes so it was an avoid for me, although I did take some cash just in case we needed to use it for whatever reason. I feel that the safest general route through the map is behind Sniper Rock and through the no man's land on the way to Scav House, taking a wide angle around to the edge. Be careful of the mines, but very very few people come out this wide. This is one of the few maps where I'll move quite a bit at the beginning, because you can normally get to a safer place in the first 30 seconds with a nearly 0% chance of running into someone else. 
The most problematic spawns are starting at outskirts itself, or in particular down at RUAF because it's not particularly appealing to run all the way around the whole map. But while sprinting across the beach works most of the time, it would be a real shame to get ended doing something rash. In my run, I ran into someone else presumably doing a survive woods daily as they were there bang on 7 minutes just like me. Given that we were in an inferior position tactically, but running all the way around felt bad as well, I decided to give them the chance to extract first, as from their side you can leave with the car while out of sight from my perspective. Finally, we have Lighthouse. This is a strange map as players generally gravitate north, which is this way by the way, and we have a ton of extracts, Southern Road, Path to Shoreline, Mountain Pass, Northern Checkpoint, and Road to Military Base. Mountain Pass needs a Red Rebel and a Paracord like the Reserve Dome, so take those with you, and the military base is another car extract which, although it's off to the side, I'd probably rather not use it unless you spawn right up at the top of the map and have little choice. Most of the other spawns will be relatively close to an extract, and the hardest ones are halfway along the west side where I think you'd be best off making your way backwards to Southern Road after the first couple of minutes. As long as you can avoid fillers and the road camp, you'll mostly likely be okay given the large number of options open to you. Clearly this was a very quick skim through each map and there's tons more situations for each one but that should give you a good start on how to approach it. Although it was a little bit boring, I did actually manage to complete the guide on the first time with no deaths so it does work. Regarding loadouts, there is a temptation to play mega kitted but I prioritised mobility, hearing and consistency. Using a kit that you're not used to or heavy armours that make your move speed really low is not necessarily the ideal play. There is also an argument too that mega kits with thermals and stuff like that will make you a target for suspicious players. Obviously there's no way of knowing how valid this is, but it's a thought that crosses people's mind, including mine. Armors that lend themselves well to this quest are the TTSK rig, which is mainly what I use, the slick if you want to go high end, or something like the Gazelle. These have low debuffs and the TTSK makes sense specifically on reserve and lighthouse too because of the red rebel extracts that require no armor but still allow rigs. As for weapons, again, just go with something flexible that you're comfortable with and buy the best rounds that you can, ideally something that uses 7.62 BP or M61. I used a combination of the RSAS and the RD704 depending on the map, but whatever your preference will do. Finally, consider using the Meldonin stim, especially in the last sets of raids. The extra stamina and damage reduction are both really good for this quest and the effect lasts for 15 minutes which should encompass your entire raid. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.